Hello everyone, it's Diane. And today I thought I would show you how I make a tiny Victorian parasol. What I like to start with is choosing the fabric. And I know this looks very sheer, but once you have this all wrapped up, you would not be able to tell that it's sheer. But the reason that I pick sheer fabric is because it's thin and the thinner the fabric, the better it's going to look once it's all twisted together. If you start using a thicker fabric to start with, it will be very bulky and less streamlined and won't look as real as if you use the thinner fabric. What I started with is an octagon. That's the shape of your average umbrella or parasol. So that is what I created here, and it has eight sides, straight sides, and that's what's going to give you the umbrella shape. So in the description, I'm going to put a link to a JPEG that will have this shape, and also I'll be putting the finished parasol in a small decorative box, and I'll also include that pattern for you in the link. What I'm going to do is take a pencil. I always use mechanical pencils because they're super fine and they don't need to be sharpened. Whenever you're trying to write or draw over fabric, fabric moves. So you would hold down the edge of where you're drawing. Hold down this side so that it doesn't move. Hold down this side so it doesn't move, and etc. Now you have your octagon drawn on the fabric. And I have a piece of shiny, glossy cardboard, and that's where I'm going to be putting my glue that I'm going to be using. I'm using a quick dry tacky glue for this part. What you're going to be doing is sealing your edges of the octagon so that when you cut it, it does not fray. Taking a straight, a pin or a needle, or in this instance, I'm using a broken toothpick. Just run it over the glue over your drawn pencil line. Okay, now that the glue is dry, just cut it out along the pencil line with a very fine scissor. What I use for the handle of the parasol is a decorative toothpick. And I purchased these toothpicks um, in, a, in a, actually in a grocery store, but I'm pretty sure you could find these online. And if you look really closely, you see that I've used these in other projects before where I've um, made art supplies with them as well, but they have a nice carved turned edge and it looks really, really cute when you do it with a parasol. So what I did is I painted most of it. It's not necessary to paint the whole thing because this part's going to be covered by fabric anyway, but I did paint the, the tip of the parasol and I painted the handle that will be showing. In order to find the center of your fabric, I have punched a hole in the center of my pattern and I'm going to lay that down. And make a mark. Now I'm just going to take the toothpick itself and I'm just going to push that through make a hole it does come through and when you have a little bit of the tip say uh, maybe a little bit like a quarter inch what you're going to do is you're going to run a little bit of glue around it just to keep it in place 
but I want to talk to you about the easiest way to find miniature trim. Now, when you go to the craft store or the sewing store, you always find this is a very common kind of uh, synthetic lace. If you can get lace in cotton, it's much better, easier to work with. But if you can't, you can still buy a synthetic lace. But what I want to, I know this is like really big and that's not what we're actually going to use. We're going to use a small portion of this larger lace as, as our edging for our parasol. So what you would do if you have a buy a seam ripper, you would just go along and you would detach this part of the larger piece of lace that holds the gathers. And then once you would had that completely removed, this is what you're left with. Now, what I am looking for is not this edge because that's still a little bit too large and uneven. What I would be using is this edge, this very thin lacy edge, and that's what's gonna go around there. For this size parasol, I have about 15 inches here. So if you do 15 to 16 inch piece of lace, that should work just fine for this size. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it along. If you see these little dots here, here, and here, intermittent dots, that's where I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to use that as my guide to cut. So I'm going to start here. You still, even though it's, you got all this, this little bit of lace is all you really want to show. You still need to leave a little bit of the netting so that you have something to glue down. So I'm just gliding the scissor along. Again, the whole purpose of doing miniatures is to make it look like a minuscule version of real life. And when you reduce anything in size, you have to reduce everything. So to use full size lace doesn't make any sense. It won't look real. It'll always look like what it is. So what you wanna do is you wanna make your own lace by cutting down the lace you already have. Okay, so yeah, this is what you're left with and that's all you need in order to put a nice little edging on this because it's all gonna be twisted up and you're not gonna really see the details anyway. You could have done this, uh, obviously I should have done this actually before I stuck the this in here, but it's already dry, so we'll work with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing this down to the edge of the octagon now, um, we could talk about glue. I'm still going to continue to, for this part, I'm still going to continue to use the regular tacky glue. You can use fabric glue, obviously, um, if you are able to get um, a thin enough bead of glue. Anything that you could get a really thin bead of glue. Um, a glue gun would work if you could get, again, a really thin bead of glue. I always use tacky glue. I'm just partial to it. I'm comfortable with it. And now I'm just going to go to the edge and just cover this nice and tight along the edge of the fabric. Because this is a synthetic, a synthetic lace, it might take a little bit with the tacky glue to stay down. A little bit of uh, effort, I should say. And there you are. So that's lace and that's, now what you're going to do now is do that going all the way around.
going to put a little bit of glue around a couple of the edges so that I don't have to keep stopping. And then the glue actually can set up so that it's tacky enough to take it. Now what you're gonna do is hold down, in order to turn the corner of this octagon, you're gonna hold down the corner and you're gonna make a tiny little fold right at the corner. Hope you're able to see that. Now, again, you're at the next corner. You're gonna make a sharp corner and then press down again so that you're maintaining those corners. Because you like, you want them to be there when you fold up the umbrella because it, it will help it appear as an octagon umbrella the way it's supposed to. It's a little fiddly, but all miniatures are, aren't they? Okay. Adds another edge. As you see, I'm because I'm folding it at those corners, I'm maintaining that octagon shape. There you go. So there's your lace. Make sure it's all nice and dry before you move on to the next step. Now, in the sample, I made a little bit of, I took a little bit of the lace and I did a little round here at the top. So I'm gonna do that right now. Put a little glue running around the top. Attach one end. Just wind it around. it down and just snip it off now we're ready to start forming the folds of the parasol we still have our octagon shape and what you're going to do is we're going to switch we're going to switch to a super glue something that's fast and easy, dries very fast um, again whatever you have and you favor working with what we're going to do is take your, one of your tips square it off octagon shape and you're going to take this and you're going to glue it directly down with a small bead of glue. So small that I actually don't even use the applicator. I use another sharp toothpick. And I want only a bead of glue. Enough that it's going to hold. And you're going to take that and you glue it right down tightly, meaning that you have tension here tightly to the parasol handle. And make sure that's glued and dry before you move in on to the next one, which is you're going to now take this one diagonally across, put a bead of glue on there. And you're going to pull that one down 
right above the other, lining up with it. Remember your tension and holding that one down. Now you don't want to glue. You still want to be able to see the parasol handle in between these two. So that's why you want to be very limited with your glue. You want enough to stick it down, but not enough that you can't see the parasol handle in between. So if you see what I mean, you can still see the wood, you can still see the wood. And the reason for that is you're gonna bring this corner down once these two are set, and you're gonna bring this corner down in between those. So we're gonna do that now. Be the glue here. And you're gonna pull this down in between the first two, attaching it with tension to the parasol handle. That's all stuck down. You're gonna to go to this side and do the same thing. Just a bead of glue. Remember, you could always add more, but you can't take away, especially crazy glue, once it's down. Okay, so I'm holding that down in between the others so that they are all attached to the parasol handle. Now, in a real umbrella, these corners, you've got these four corners left. In a real umbrella, those would also be down. But since we are working in miniature, the chances of us making that work is very slim because you really don't have the, the, um, the space to do that. It's not going to work. So we're gonna leave it as it is. We're gonna take our tacky glue and we're gonna glue down the ends of each, each triangle. What we wanna do is flatten everything out to decrease that bulk. The flatter everything is, the more realistic it will look. You could do this with the tacky glue. I mean, you could, you could do this with the crazy glue, but this I, I prefer to do with the tacky glue. You could do it either way. Okay, so now you have four triangles with four points. And now what you're going to do is you're gonna start, if you watch what I'm doing, you're gonna twist, twist. And as you see, that's what you're, the look you're going for is that twist. But they're not gonna stay down. So you have to glue each one down. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna be going to the left. You can do it to the right or you can do it to the left, whatever you're comfortable with. But I did it to the left. Do this one, go to the left. Now they're not gonna be exactly flat. And then I'm gonna do this one. So they're all to the left. Now, I'm going to twist until they roll down. And this first one, I'm going to use a little bit of the tacky glue because I really want that one to get down when I twist. Twist it, twist it. That one gets stuck down. If the tacky glue isn't working, like it isn't working for me here, we're gonna go back to 
the super glue. Super glue. Normally I would just hold this down until it dried, but since this is a demonstration, I think it's much faster to use the, the uh, super glue. Most umbrellas, the way they shut is with a little strap. So I have a couple of options here. Now, this would be your average thin, synthetic, silky ribbon that you can get in any craft store, which would work fine, but it's a little, for miniatures, it's a little bit too thick. There's a white one that's slightly smaller. Then I have a blue one that's slightly thinner. And then I actually have a black one that's even thinner than that. So for this, I'm gonna use the white one just because it's prettier. Or I could use the blue actually, let's do the blue. That might be a, have a little bit of interest to it, but the thinner and smaller, again, reduce the bulk, reduce the size, everything smaller will make the miniature much more believable. This would be much more believable if it was the right color. But since I can do the blue, but I think I'm gonna stick with the white. I think we're going to lay the lace, lay the ribbon right above where the lace is. Make sure that that's nice and secure. I would maybe make another spot, a couple of, and then like a quarter of an inch around and just pull it around as tight as you can, just as it would be on a real parasol. And then just pull that over and secure that tight. Snip it and there you go. There's your parasol. Okay. Now we're gonna put a parasol in a nice decorative box straight from the boutique. This is a printable box that I made specifically for this piece. As you can see, it's sized to the correct size. And as my gift to you for sticking with me this long through this video, you, you will be able to find this and the octagon pattern and in the description, I'll link to it in the description and uh, you can print out a JPEG in, in color. So let me show you how I would cut this out. I know that most people would just want to cut with a scissor. I don't use a scissor for things like this. I use an X-Acto knife. So bear with me. If you want to just use a scissor, you can skip over this part. Whenever you cut anything with an X-Acto knife, the piece that you are cutting out is always protected by the ruler. So if you are, let me move this, you would cover the box itself. So just cut along this very thin black line that I left here. Now you'll turn this way. Let's cut along. This is the bottom. This is the top of the box, bottom of the box, top of the box. Just cut along there. This is still there, but we're gonna take care of that. Just square off everything first. Still protecting your, your picture, your images. Always protect them because if you were to skip, if you had it like this and you're cutting over here and I happen to go like this, I cut right into it. You don't want to do that. You always want to protect your art. So we are protecting the cover because that is, we could always make a new one of this, but the cover, once it's printed, it's printed. And now we want to cover, cut this one piece off. Okay, 
Now you want to cut all these notches. But before you do that, before you cut those notches, you want to lightly score your box where it's going to fold. What you want to do is you want to get something somewhat sharp, but not so sharp that will cut paper. You just want to put an indent into the paper so that when you go to fold it, it's going to automatically fold where you score it. So right here to here, that's one size. So you are going to score from there to there. And the JPEG that I have for you is going to have directions on how to do this. Don't worry about it. This is a plastic um, needle. Can't cut through anything. It can get through w w uh, wide woven fabric, but it's not going to rip your paper. So that's why I use it for this. So do you see? It automatically is going to fold at that spot where I had put that. Now I'm going to do it again over here. From this corner to this corner, line that up, and then pull this all the way across. I know that mo a lot of printies leave the black lines, but then it doesn't look real. When you leave the black lines, it, it just doesn't look right. Now you want to go from along this line and connect the two, because that's another fold. Do it on the other side. And exact, exactly what I'm doing here is what you're going to do with the bottom of the box. Now, let's cut out our little notches. Be careful because in this instance, you can't protect this part. So you're gonna go from there to there one side of your triangle, one side of your triangle. Do not cut this part. Do not cut any of the actual art part. Go line this up. If it's easier for you to cut these notches out with a scissor, you can do that. You just won't have this really nice sharp edge here. So this is what you're left with, and you're going to fold it over. That's where you had scored earlier. This is where you scored earlier because you were scoring along this line. Now you scored from here all the way across. So you scored there, fold it over. There's your box top. Now what you're gonna do is go back to your glue, take a little bit of glue. You're gonna put it on this flap. I mean, this is something that you all might know already, but this is, I'm just explaining it for people that may have, may never have done this before, have made their own boxes. So this might be nothing to you, but some people have never done it before. So that's who I'm explaining this for. So there you go. You're gonna glue that down so that you have a nice sharp edge. Glue this one down so you have a nice sharp edge. Be very um, subtle with the amount of glue you use. It's paper, you don't need much. And that's your cover. Okay, so here's your bottom of your box. Here's your top. They should fit fairly snugly. It's okay if they're a little bit loose because what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill this with some tissue paper. In every little boutique, whether it's miniature or real life, 
they always put a little bit of tissue paper in a box in order to to make unwrapping your product that much more special. So I have this green, light green, oh, it matches my nails, um, paper. And I'm just going to cut out, I don't know, about a three to four inch square. Doesn't really matter because you're going to be crumpling it up. And you're going to crumple it up to place it in the bottom of your box to place that in. So let's put a little bit bead of glue in there, just a little bit to hold it down. And there you go. A little bit of tissue paper. If you want to get really fancy, you can do tissue paper that folds out when you open it, like a gift. And let's see, we'll be around there. Okay, we're gonna make a nice rectangle. Okay, and what you would do is you'd center it and it flips over. I would put, you could either glue it down or not. Right now I'm not gonna glue it down. And you would put your umbrella in there. And if this was really working, you would trim these. And this side, I wanna trim it so that when it folds in, it fits. And it'd be like opening a gift, right? There you go.